Since the early days of 2012 theories, when people like David Wilcock were channeling entities with names like Ra and Seth, people were told that 2012 was really about enlightenment. This idea is one that we are supposed to believe. Yes, I know this is a bit of an insult to those who think that they have uncovered the idea that 2012 is really about a consciousness shift or spiritual evolution as opposed to some doomsday situation through their diligent research. Well, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but this has been the line even back when 2012 enlightenment was supposed to have occurred in 2000. It was pushed back to 2012 after it didn't happen. Nowadays, it would be very difficult to find a 2012 website that doesn't make the claim similar to the following. Many people think that 2012 was about the end of the world, but that's what stupid people think. We smart people know that it is really about a great cosmic shift in consciousness. Okay, they might be a little more subtle than that, but what I'm trying to say is that you think you're the only one who knows that 2012 is supposed to be about spiritual evolution, but this is what you were meant to think all along. The idea, if properly presented, has many uses for global government, one of which will be the acceptance of the genocide of dissenters of that new system, as well as patriotism for the new system that will purport to be a utopia. I'm not saying that people behind promulgating the ideas are a part of some secret cabal. Well, for the most part. I think that for the most part, these people really do believe their sources. In David Wilcox's case, his source is raw, and as we will see, there are many types of raws out there, and they are extremely concerned with getting those who are willing to listen to them to tell the world about this coming enlightenment in or around 2012. The idea is that the planet is due for a change in consciousness. They say it's a spiritual evolution. Some say it will bring a physical as well as a spiritual shift. They offer various pseudo-scientific reasons for this happening. Most of them, if pressed, will default to a variation of the following to explain why we are to expect a spiritual evolution. That a vibrational change, which is supposed to be due to the solar system entering a certain nebula in or around 2012, will cause us to raise our vibration and thus change us into new spiritual beings. I covered this theory in depth in my video, Michael Tassarian is Wrong, 2009, a debunkumentary where I found that not only are we moving away from the star system where this nebula supposedly is, but to suggest that the solar system passes through anything at all as a result of the 26,000 year precession cycle requires a fundamental misunderstanding of the precession cycle, which has nothing to do with the solar system's position in the galaxy, and therefore could never tell you when the solar system was going to enter a nebula, no matter how well that you understood it. It simply does not, and never will, have anything to do with that. And even if they meant to tell us that they were referring to the 250 million year cycle of the solar system's revolution around the galaxy, then, in addition to all the problems with what I'll call the precession version of enlightenment, you are also expecting people to believe that nebulas somehow are made up of captured light particles or photons, as opposed to dust, gas, and plasma. This is a logical fallacy in itself, as light, by its nature, is moving rather rapidly and doesn't gather in nebulas or anywhere else. And even this is assuming that light somehow is known to cause spiritual enlightenment. But there is absolutely no reason to think this, even if nebulas were made up of light, which they are not. The whole thing is based on logical impossibilities. And if someone tries to appeal to a secret ancient knowledge to validate this, they are usually doing so with some variation of the 26,000 year precession cycle. Because, to the best of my knowledge, there is no indication that any ancients were aware of the 250 million year cycle of the solar system around the galactic center. And even if they did know about it, it would be illogical to expect that things would be the same from one revolution to the next, as the lifespan of a nebula is at the most several hundreds of thousands of years and one revolution around the galaxy takes us 250 million years to complete. What I find the most fascinating is that most of the time people are not requiring anyone to explain to them why they should expect this consciousness shift. It has almost become the background noise of the New Age movement, and as such has been taken as truth, just because they have heard it repeated so often. They are content to take these snake oil salesmen at their word, and I realize that in some cases it is presented in such a way that seems very scientific, and it's easy to be sucked into it. I once was, and although people don't understand the science, 
They feel that the reason that they don't understand it is because they aren't smart enough to, which makes them believe that the salesman is exceedingly brilliant because he apparently does, which builds trust in that person. This guy knows everything. The fact is, the salesmen themselves probably haven't been given many details about the mechanics of all this shifting either. Remember, it's coming from their sources. Yeah, so let's look at their sources for a moment. Channeling and other forms of direct contact with the quote spirit world have been the primary way that this idea has come down to us. I've already mentioned David Wilcock and Ra. Ra, who apparently takes over Wilcock's body from time to time, thinks the exact same way as the other entities who take over other people's bodies all over the world. The only difference seems to be that the entities will claim to be different things to different people. Some of them claim to be either aliens from other planets, Pleiadians or Greys, sometimes they claim to be ascended masters from this planet, or light beings, or angels, or even just plain regular dead people. They definitely play to the particular person's paradigm. I would have the listener notice at this point that some of these claims are mutually exclusive. That is to say that it appears that although the message is exactly the same, which to me suggests a relationship, what they tell the humans about what they are is sometimes vastly different, which suggests that they aren't the most honest of beings, whatever they may be. The following is a typical example of something found all over the internet, of people being almost forced to tell the world about this 2012 enlightenment by these beings. In this example, she is in contact with, quote, star people. So you may be wondering then why I'm creating a 2012 blog. I was asked during an alien channeling late in the night, then nudged during meditations back home in Oakland, California, then told with loud clarity while driving through an amazingly strong vortex by the Trinity River. And now, since I didn't take the other three blatant hints, I am being pushed to do so now. All right, already, I'm doing it. And, actually, I am happy and excited about it because it just feels like the timing is perfect. Also, I have noticed so many people getting worked up about gloom and doom with 2012. I feel it is part of my mission to raise awareness. 2012 is certainly not a catastrophic event, rather a beautiful, highly enlightening shift to a high vibrational acceleration into a very high dimensions. It is ascension at its all-time best. There are literally hundreds of such cases each one feeling obligated to share this message to the world after their supernatural encounters. In fact, much of the Enlightenment movement was started by people who admit their work is in some cases directly dictated to them from these entities. Take David Icke, for example, one of the best known proponents of a coming spiritual awakening in 2012. Much of his own testimony is one of, quote, extra-dimensional entities telling him to write books on this. He claims that much of his early research was given to him directly from them. The same is true with the birth of the New Age movement itself, through H.P. Blavatsky and Alice Bailey, who claim to have been given their teachings by, quote, ascended masters, or humans, who apparently have achieved this state of enlightenment. For those that haven't actually channeled any entities or had the displeasure of being abducted and indoctrinated by one, there are many people out there that simply consult the spirit world with tarot cards or some other means of getting information from spirits. The fact is, this whole idea has been given to us by the spirit world, almost without exception. And the most intriguing thing to me about it is that the spirit world either knows very little about astronomy and science, yet feels obligated to tell us what they think that they know about it, or they have another agenda that we haven't figured out yet about 2012 and enlightenment, and it is necessary to lie about who or what they are for some reason. So how will this idea of spiritual enlightenment lead to genocide? Very easily, given the proper circumstances. And it is my belief that the proper circumstances are in fact being planned. I understand that what I'm about to say seems impossible at the moment but I think that the world will be a very different place by 2012, and many weird things will be engineered to happen between now and then. This will be because there is an agenda that will greatly benefit from the masses believing themselves to be bucking the old system 
in favor of a new, spiritually enlightened one. First, let's look at some verbiage associated with the supposed coming enlightenment. Notice especially the view of those that do not wish to be enlightened, or those that simply will be unable to advance to the higher level like everyone else. There's a lot of talk about the need to eliminate one group in order for the rest of the world to progress into this new, promised spiritual utopia. Michael Tessarian said the following, And that end date of 2012 signals major changes positively for consciousness. Again, as I repeat, before you can have the light, or when you have a bright light, the first thing you notice is the dirt. The survivors are those who can adjust their consciousness and mentality to the nonviolent movement of nature and synchronize their psyches with the universal meta-theme. 